Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Test Rigger video series, an artificial intelligence powered testing platform which helps us to automate our test automation just using simple plain English text. So we are going to automate a more complex website this time instead of just automating some of the test website that we have been discussing so far. And today I have taken a website from New Zealand, which is the PB Tech, a very, very popular website, which actually helps us buy things pretty much like Amazon.in or Amazon.com or any other e-commerce website. This is one of the e-commerce website in New Zealand, which we are going to be automating this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this department. As you can see in this particular website, it has a, a hovering link for clicking the department. And then if I just hover all the way to the phones and accessories, and I'm gonna choose this phone. And I wanted to purchase an Android phone with a Samsung, probably uh, a Galaxy Z Flip, something like that. Like, so for doing that, I also need to select the brand here. And let's say if I'm gonna go to the Samsung and you can see that I'm gonna apply the filter here. It's gonna bring up all the phones. And I'm also gonna select the filter uh, as the highest price, something like that. So it's already in the highest price anyways, but so I'm going to still select the highest price from the filter and I'm going to select the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, uh, this one, which I'm probably going to purchase. So if I click this uh, add to cart over here, it's going to bring me up this page, proceed to checkout, uh, and then it's going to show me all the prices which it has got, which is all cool. Uh, and also I can increase the quantity if I wanted to. And you can see that the quantity has been updated here. And then if I hit proceed to checkout, it's gonna ask me for my username and password. So let's say I'm gonna log in. And you can see that brings me up the checkout options here. And let's say if I'm gonna select the rural or standard delivery, something like this, and I'm gonna hit continue. Uh, and it's gonna ask me all this detail and I'm gonna hit the review order and it's gonna show me all the order. So I can go ahead and place the order, but I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna be really purchasing things for me. So this is our full workflow that we are gonna be doing this time. And we'll see how we could really automate this whole workflow. And we're gonna see how we can really automate this whole workflow uh, using test trigger, using just the plain English text. So you know what I'm gonna do basically, right? Like you already saw the whole workflow. We are just gonna start automating this one by one. So I'm going to keep this PB Tech website over here, probably on the side. So let's start writing the PB Tech. Uh, and then I'm going to copy this URL. I'm going to paste it over here. Uh, and then I'm just going to leave the username and password empty for now. And I'm going to choose Windows this time as an operating system instead of Ubuntu that we have been using. And I'm going to select zero for the generator test. And I'm going to create the test suite. So let's start adding the first custom test scenario. So for doing that, I'm going to hit this add custom test scenarios over here. And let's call this as purchasing Android. Um, and I'm going to start creating the scenarios over here. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, choose the departments over here. So for clicking this department, what I'm going to do is I need to click the uh, departments. So let's do this click departments. But you can see that in the website, actually, there is not only one department. So if I just search for something like departments, you can see there are three departments available. See, there is one, two, uh, three departments, as you can see over here on the search. So how does the uh, test rigger know exactly which departments it needs to select? So we need to tell a referential locator for the departments to be selected. So for the referential locator, what we can do is probably we can say that click the departments to the left of this brands. So we have a brands here. So this is the one which we are taking as a referential uh, and go and click this department. Can we say that? So this is the power of the uh, referential selector itself. So we can select uh, the departments using this referential selector and we can say that we need to select the departments to the left of the brand, right? And then it should be selected. And then I need to click the phones and accessories. So for clicking the phones and accessories, I need to click the phones and accessories, which is going to be this one. And once I click the phones and accessories over here, I then need to select the uh, mobile phones and then I need to select the Android phones. And once I select the Android, I also need to select the Samsung from the brand. So this is the operation which I need to do. 
the operations are going to be pretty much the click 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 operations which is cool but for selecting the samsung uh, from the brand what i should do is i need to perform a select operation right pretty much like the select operation that we saw in our earlier videos of this series so i'm going to select the samsung below the brands over here which is nothing but the brand yeah and then i also need to click the apply filter once i select the brand so let's do that and it brings me up the samsung over here and i also need to uh, select the highest price which is of the sort by so for doing that you can again use the referential locator if you really wanted to uh, something like this like select highest price to the right of the sort by so it's like to the right of the uh, sort by and then I need to click that Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. I don't have to specify like everything over here. Like do I need to select the 12 GB model of Mystic bronze or black? So if you want exactly the bronze or black very specifically, you can do that. Or if you just want to select any of the phones, which is of matching that particular text, then you can tell that as well. So I'm gonna do that over here. Something like click the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. And once I do that, I need to click the add to cart. This brings up this proceed to checkout. So we need to do all these things over here, which are these one. So add to cart, proceed to checkout. And once I proceed to checkout, I also need to verify whether the price of this phone is 3,404. So how do I verify this text? Basically this whole text, how do I verify that? Well, in order to do that, we can do it in many different ways. And I have chosen one of the way probably which can help me to identify how we can do that. So I can do a lot of permutations and combinations here. So I can do something like this. Verify that the page contained 3404.75 on the right of Inc. GST, which is this one, right? That brings me up this guy, which is cool. And once I did that, I also need to enter uh, the quantity as probably three. Uh, and I hit tab, you can see that it changes this value over here. So probably I can do that as well. Like how do I do this? So enter three in quantity. So this will enter number three on the quantity. And I also need to type the tab because then only the, the value will change. And once I do that, I also need to verify if that value is actually uh, changing to 10,202, which is gonna be this one right so i need to i can do a small verification here while i go and once i do that i'm then going to again click the proceed to checkout which is going to be this one and then you can see that it enter asks me to enter the username and password which i'm not going to do it rather i'm just going to enter the login over here this is exactly the same login operation that we did in our second video of this particular series which i'm just going to enter it over here and once I do the login, it's going to enter, ask me for the username and password, which we are going to be probably saving it after I complete this particular recording operation. And once we have everything over here, then we need to do the checkout operation, uh, which are going to be these operations. Like we need to scroll down, we need to select the standard delivery, click continue and review the order. That's it. These are the whole things that we have did. So this is like a super simple manual test case that we have got. And uh, before it starts running, probably I'm just going to cancel this test. I also need to store my login authentication information. So I'm just going to go to this login and then I'm going to enter my username and password for the test to use within my site. And now if I go to my test case and now if I rerun my test, this time it is going to use my login credentials from the settings that I have saved. And you can see that our test literally fails while it starts. The reason why it fails is because you can see on this particular computer, which is currently running the Windows machine that we have used, it's running. It's actually running on a remote machine, right? So that particular machine can be running in a different location. And this particular website asks you whether do you want to use the global site or do you want to stay in the New Zealand website? So we have to somehow tell that if not, the test is going to fail for you. So that's something we need to add within our test case as a handler so that it doesn't really uh, fail for you. So we are going to be doing that as well before the test start failing even more uh, badly. So let's try to edit the test case and let's add one operation that we need. Click stay on the New Zealand website. So I'm going to 
update and retest. And now you can see that the test is actually running fine without any problem because it doesn't really have that issue. And you can see that the test has successfully completed with all the operations that we were actually looking for. So you can see that it has went all the way to the checkout. So you can cleanly look that it has doing it is doing the proceed to checkout and then it is selecting. It's also doing a verification with changing the value. So if you go back and see here, it changed the quantity from uh, one to three and also check the value as thousand two hundred and two dot seven four dollar uh, and also it verified that which is pretty cool and once it verifies that it also selects all the operation it also performed the login operation for us over here and that's the reason we could able to check out without any problem which is cool so it could able to log in it could able to check out and then it's also trying to do the proceed to check out so this is the complex operation that we have did over here to perform a checkout operation using super simple text-like scenarios and it is doing all the operations for us automatically using the artificial intelligence and machine learning of test rigor. In our next video, we'll see how we can even simplify this particular operation that we are doing. And let's say in your business, if you have like multiple different steps, which is kind of repeatable most of the time, how can you reduce that using reusable rules?